Hey, so we've been uploading all these cool planet renders, and we just uploaded these new ones, where it starts from this Earth view from orbit, and it kind of zooms in onto different regions and countries. And I want to show you a couple cool things you can do with these. So these are actually really good for infographic type things, where you want to show some educational information about, say, the Amazon River, or maybe a cool targeting sequence for like a spy movie or something you're working on. So I just wanna show you how I created these two effects. It's pretty simple. So first I'll show you how I made this Amazon River one. So go ahead and download the one that's called Earth Zoom South America 2. This one's gonna give you a close up of the northern half of South America, which is where the Amazon River is. And you can use this effect on any part of the Earth. I'm just using this one because the Amazon River is a really nice high contrast geographical feature when seen from space. So this effect will work really nicely for it. Let's go ahead and drag that down, make a new composition with it. And I'm actually gonna duplicate this layer so that we have two of the exact same thing. Now we wanna offset this by one or two frames, not too far. So I just dragged it so that the top layer starts or ends one or two frames sooner. And now I'm gonna set the blending mode of that layer to difference. And the way the difference mode works is a little bit weird. If the pixels on both layers are exactly the same, then they'll appear as black. But if they're different, then they'll appear as a brighter color. And so what we get is kind of a mask that shows the movement of the globe. And this is actually kind of a cool effect on its own. But we can see that it kind of creates a high contrast mask showing where the Amazon River is and all the other high contrast features. Now, if you need a brighter effect, you can actually offset the layers by another frame and you get kind of a more high contrast look. But if you go too extreme with it, you start to get a ghostly double image. So don't go too far. Now I'm just gonna crop these two layers to about the point where the zoom ends and it kind of settles on a close up of the Amazon River. So I'll select both those layers and I'll crop their in points right there. And then I'll set their out points at the end right here. Now let's select both the layers, right click and go to pre-compose. And I'm gonna move all the attributes to a new composition. Okay, let's drag another copy of South America 2 down here below our pre-composition. And what we can do is set this pre-composition to a blending mode of screen. And if we toggle it on and off, we can see that the river and all the little sharp details become a little bit brighter. So let's enhance that effect by using maybe a levels adjustment. I'll drag and drop that onto the layer and let's crank up the brightness. Now I want to trim out the darkest pixels. So I'm gonna lower the dark end of the spectrum like that. So now the river and all of the little high contrast details are glowing but we only wanna see the river. So let's go ahead and draw a quick mask around the river. It doesn't have to be too perfect. And if you want to, you can press F and increase the mask feather just to kind of soften the edges of that mask. Okay, now we need to actually keyframe the mask because as you can see, the earth is rotating out from the mask like that. So I'm gonna press M for mask and I'll add a keyframe here at the beginning to the mask path. And I'll go to the end and just drag the mask so that it follows the river. Now, because it's not moving in a straight line because the earth is a round globe, just kind of watch it to make sure that it doesn't drift off. Maybe in the middle, you need to make a quick adjustment. And now we can see that the Amazon river is glowing. Now let's create a little wipe transition. So the effect kind of grows. So I'm going to click on my pre-composition one and I'll draw another mask, this time just a square like this. And this one's called mask two. Let's set the mode here from add to subtract. So now anything inside this mask is going to be covered up. So here at the beginning, I can cover up the river like this and I'll press M for mask path and I'll add a keyframe and then farther along, maybe about right here, I'll just move this mask up and to the right. I'm going this direction because that's the direction the river flows. It flows towards the ocean. But if you think it looks better for it to grow this direction, that's totally fine too. So let's watch our animation. Looks pretty cool. Maybe I can hit F for feather and increase the feather of that mask just for a softer transition. And it's looking pretty good, but we can enhance this effect even more by adding a glow to really make the river pop. You can use whatever glow you like, but I'm gonna use Crate's Easy Glow. It's one of the pro plugins available as part of the LaForge suite for After Effects and Premiere. If you aren't a Production Crate Pro user yet, you can still use the free LaForge plugins, as well as demo the pro plugins with a watermark. I'm gonna increase the intensity. Now you can increase it as much as you want to get the effect you want to achieve. And it looks pretty cool, but I think we might be able to enhance this. If I go over here to the input, I can lower the threshold, and that means more of the pixels are gonna glow. That also increases the intensity though, so maybe we wanna lower that down a little bit. Okay, yeah, that's really cool. Okay, and the last step is to add a label here. So I'll grab my text tool and I'll type Amazon River, and I want this to follow the river. So on the bottom layer here, 
the South America 2. I'm going to go over to my tracker window and I'll click on track motion. And let's move this track point and find a nice high contrast portion of the river, like maybe this part right here. It's pretty recognizable, should be easy to track. I'll press analyze forward and that is actually a pretty easy track because it's basically just a straight line in this case. Let's right click over here, go to new, add a new null object. And then over here in the tracker window, I'm going to click on edit target. I'll choose that null object and press OK. And then I'll press apply, apply X and Y. I'll press OK. So now we have this null object, the little red square, which follows the river. So on our text layer, the Amazon river text layer, we can go over here where it says none and parent this to the null object. So now the words are going to follow the river. And we don't want the words to appear until the glowing effect appears. There's lots of different effects you could use to make these words appear, but I'm just going to use a really basic typewriter effect. So I'll click and drag that onto the text layer and let's open that up and take a look at the text menu under the animator one menu where it says range selector. I'll open that up. And now I have these two keyframes that I can edit. So let's bring these together so that the words type a lot quicker. I'll just adjust the timing a little bit. And in my case, I kind of want it to feel like it's just continuing with the same momentum of the wipe animation, something like that. Okay, and that's looking pretty good. Maybe we can add a little bit more depth to it by adding a drop shadow to the words. So with the words selected, I'm gonna go up to layer, layer styles, and I'll add a drop shadow. And then over here in the layer styles, I'm gonna open up the drop shadow options and I'll increase the distance so it looks like it's floating above the ground pretty far. I'm also going to increase the size because I feel like the shadow would be more diffuse at this altitude. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. Now, one other thing that you can do if you just want to push it a little bit farther is make the Amazon River words move a little bit quicker. That way it seems like they're closer to the camera. It kind of creates like a parallax effect. So I'm going to press P for position and I'm going to add a keyframe for position right about here. And then as this moves across at the end of the animation, I'm going to just push it a little bit farther than it would move on its own. And that way it's going to move a little bit faster and it's going to look like it's closer to the camera due to parallax. So now we've created a really cool basic animation for an infographic or a documentary, any sort of educational or informative video that you might be working on. Now let's do something a little bit more flashy, maybe for your spy thriller that you're working on. I'm going to download the video called Earth Zoom United States 1, and let's make a new composition with that. So now we've got a very similar animation, but this time it's zooming in on the full United States. Now let's pretend like we're creating a spy thriller and we want to locate a target. Maybe we're trying to figure out where Jason Bourne is. So to make this more action oriented and more kinetic, I think I'm gonna give it a second zoom. So after it zooms in and settles here, I'm gonna move the pivot point or the anchor point to where I want to zoom in on my secondary zoom. So I'm gonna press Y and I'll grab the little anchor point icon right here. And let's move this to a, maybe around Northern California, right about here. Anywhere you want is fine though. Now I'll press S for scale and I'll add a keyframe. And then a few frames later, I'll zoom in and let's take a look at our animation. Okay, that's a little slow. Let's bring these keyframes together to make it move a little bit faster. I'm also gonna highlight both my keyframes and press F9 to give it a little bit of an ease in and ease out. So now we have kind of a secondary kinetic zoom. Feels very high energy. Now I'm gonna head over to a footage crate and grab any sort of sci-fi HUD or aiming reticle or something like that. This is the one I chose. Looks pretty cool. Okay, let's drag and drop this on and I'll position it over Northern California where Jason Bourne's hiding out and we need to track this map. Now I want the zoom to be part of the tracking. So I'm gonna right click on my United States layer and choose pre-compose. I'm gonna make sure to move all the attributes to the new composition, that's very important. And then I'll do another motion track and I'll make the little tracking point a little bigger and drag and drop it over Northern California, right about here. Uh, I'm not gonna track the entire thing. I'm just gonna wait till the camera settles after the initial zoom and then I'll just track forward from there. Cool. Let's right click and add a new null object. And then over here in the tracker window, just like before, I'm gonna edit target, choose my null object, and then press apply, press okay. And then I'll just move my target over that part of the map and I'll choose parent null two. So now my targeting graphic is gonna follow Northern California right there. Now let's change the size of it a little bit. It's kind of big. And let's also make it so it doesn't appear until the initial zoom is done. So it's gonna appear right about there. Now it's pretty cool animation, but it's a little bit too slow for this quick kinetic feel that we're going for. So I'm gonna right click on my targeting system animation, go up to time, time stretch, and maybe we'll double the speed by typing in stretch factor 50. So now it's gonna play twice as fast. Very cool. So I can see as it's forming, 
it looks pretty good and it's kind of done forming about the time the secondary zoom finishes but I want to add a little bit more punch to this by making this targeting system shrink down as if it's kind of locking in on the location. So let's make it start kind of big right before the secondary zoom. So I'm going to add a keyframe right there, right before the secondary zoom happens. And I'll go right to where the secondary zoom ends and I'll make the targeting icon smaller. And let's play that back and see how it feels. Okay, pretty good. Uh, let's select those two keyframes just like before and press F9 and that's gonna add a little bit of ease in and ease out to the animation. Cool, now it feels like it's really locking in there. All right, let's apply a quick effect to it. I kinda want it to be red so that it really stands out from the blue background. And I also want it to feel more digital and kind of techy. So first things first, I'm gonna add a hue and saturation effect to the targeting system graphic. And I'll just change this until it's red, maybe an orangey red like that. And I'm gonna use the CRT factory effect, which comes with the LaForge suite. Drag and drop that on, and we can see that it looks pretty cool but it does add a black background if you're putting it on graphics that have an alpha channel. So I'm just gonna set my blending mode to screen or maybe even add. Now I'm gonna choose a different preset. My favorite one is actually monitor 80s, but we need to make a few changes. So first thing I'm gonna do in this case is I'm gonna go to the screen menu and turn the bulge setting down to zero. I don't think it's really appropriate for what we're trying to work on here. And the next thing is the screen tint is set to green, which is conflicting with the red and kind of making the whole thing darker because they're on opposite ends of the color wheel. So let's set our screen tint to white so it doesn't influence the red at all. Same thing with the glow. The glow is also set to green. So let's set this to either white or we could even set it to red if we want to accent the red even further. Now over here where it says brightness, we can increase the brightness and we get a nice bright glowing digital effect. Yeah, the other thing that's happening with this CRT effect is there's kind of a flicker going on, which I think looks cool, but if it's too intense for the look you're trying to go for, you could turn that down by turning down the scan lines intensity right here. But I think it looks pretty cool because it looks like it's scanning across the image like a radar. Flashing red graphics look dangerous. Okay, and we did it. We found our target. Now there are lots of other cool effects that you could do with these zooming graphics that we've uploaded to Footage Crate. So if you have any other ideas for it, let me know down in the comments. And if you make anything cool with these earth renders, be sure to share it with us on our Discord server or tag us on Instagram with it. All right, later creators.